Holy crap. That's pretty good. Oh, that's pretty good. That's pretty good. All right. All right, folks. So I just got back from GitHub Universe and there was a whole bunch of AI stuff announced there. But one thing that they announced was this thing called GitHub Spark, which is natural language to an actual application. And this is not new. We've we've seen this before. Like Vercel has had V0 for, for many, many, uh, not many years, I've probably over a year already, though. And then we got Bolt.new from StackBlitz a couple of weeks ago. And, and now GitHub has, has released their own. It's still in alpha and, and is testing it out. And I thought, like, let's make a video, not just to not to compare them because they're all different and they're all thinking about, but more of a way of like, is this the way that that programming is going to go, right? Because like we've been sticking AI on top of the, the way that we we currently program, which is writing code, but like, is there other interfaces for actually creating applications um, with AI? So. I've got a couple prompts here. I thought we would go through it, um, look at a couple of the features of the of the different ones, and then maybe peel back and and talk about uh, well, what does our future look like as uh, as web developers and people who build for the web. So first one is a video dashboard. So I asked it to make a course dashboard that has a list of videos. You can search through them, um, save your progress, add notes, use React, Tailwind, and TypeScript. So this is what GitHub Spark gave me. I'm able to sort of click through them. And that's working there. Can I add a note? Hello, save. There we go. So uh, one thing about GitHub Spark is that it's not just a code generation. It's also the runtime, meaning that you should be able to eventually pull up to GitHub Spark, type in what it is that you want the app to do, and then the app will do that, and including saving your, your data. And Obviously, that's a wild world, and, and you think, oh, it's going to write crappy code. And I think we're, we're a while away from that, but um, it works. And I can click through to all the different ones. I should be able to mark as complete. Yep, I have my progress being saved here. You can iterate through them. Um, and then they, they don't go very heavy on like the styling. It seems like it also is a theme engine. So my mind with this is immediately it went to like, you know, those people that are really good at Excel and you look at like the crazy Excel spreadsheets that they built. like, wow, you would be a very good programmer because you have built some serious stuff in this Excel sheet. Imagine them getting access to something like this. They would be dangerous. Um, imagine somebody who runs a small business. Oh, I really need a tool for being able to keep track of this data and just type it in and make it right. I didn't, I haven't even iterated on it and it's, it's already giving me a pretty good, um, proof of concept. Does it, does the search work? Yeah. It's, it's filtering them all out. So take a quick look at the code here as well. Um, it is using react. I asked for that it is using TypeScript, which I asked for it is using tailwind. So it's using all of the stuff that I explicitly asked for and like, a quick scan. This is decent, decent code. Pretty good. Next one is bolt.new. So this is from StackBlitz. StackBlitz is like an online hosted VS code. It's like a, you can run it all both like the VS code, but you can also run the back end. So if you have like a node server or something like that, you can run it and it's pretty cool. It all just sort of runs there. So this is what they have here. And let's see, can we click through to them? Yeah. So it's, it's actually running them. Um, can I add a note? <laughs> I can. That's good. Um, searching. Let's search for state. So this The filter didn't work, but this one also has a bit of a nicer UI to it, which is pretty nifty. Um, does it, Obviously, there's no video. Inspect element. It's an image tag from Unsplash. Pretty cool. Um, they also will do back end as well. So they'll write the the back end code to sort of hook it up. They don't I don't think they have data primitives, but they also can deploy it to your know, Netlify or your Cloudflare or whatever, which is pretty impressive. Um, it seems like uh, GitHub is calling there's micro applications, which seems like, yeah, like something you might build like a spreadsheet for where I need this little app for it. I'm sure they'll become macro applications once it gets better. Um, but the bold.new and bold.new, if you go to their homepage, they're also like, look at that. They're supporting like all the whole stack, all the stuff that you're, you're probably used to, right? You want to build a view app or a Svelte app or remix or next JS. Um, pretty nifty. Let's take a quick look at the actual code that it generated. 
So look at this. You get you get the whole thing, right? This is something where you could just download this and run this on your computer um, or deploy, open it in StackBlitz or deploy it to something else. Whereas like this is, I don't think that this would actually run locally. And that's not, they want to be the runtime GitHub Spark. Whereas bolt.new, look at that. You get all of your config set up from a, a pure... I want to, I have an idea and I want to get running. You can go from excited about an idea to coding with this bolt.new in like 12 seconds, which is, is unreal to me. Let's take a uh, look at the code. It's using TypeScript. It's using Tailwind. It gives me all my types. Um, this is probably, from what I've seen, this is probably the most impressive one. Um, simply because like I'm coming from this background and this is what I would, this is the code I would write, right? Uh, so that one looks pretty nifty. And then v0.dev, let's take a look. Uh, I can switch through them. Can I search? Yeah, the filtering is working. Can I add a note? So it's, it's going somewhere. Um, it's not obviously being, I don't know that they have a primitive. So let's take a look at the actual code react here. Um, you can also get it to use like shad CN if you want like a really nice looking dashboard or if you want to set yourself up for something. So beautiful. This this looks pretty nice. I don't know that this does back end, but I'd imagine that it will eventually. And I'd imagine that this will also be the runtime because it's it's from Vercel, right? Vercel is a hosting company. So I imagine that you'd be able to just either deploy it to Vercel or even one step further is like you just build the app in here and you run it and you can V0 is where your app actually lives. Um, let's do another one of the photo booth. I'll uh, speed through this. So this one I asked, uh, create a photo booth with a user's webcam that will take the photos and record 10 second videos. They should be able to choose their camera. Um, and you write in vanilla JavaScript and vanilla CSS. So, oh, right away, GitHub Spark wants to use your camera. Okay, let's do that. Allow, allow. It's, looks like I'm there. Um, the Does the camera switcher work? No, camera switcher does not work. What about take a photo? Yeah. Wrote about a recorded video. <laughs> Holy crap. That's pretty good. Oh, that's pretty good. That's pretty good. All right. I've written this code probably a hundred times in my career. So I know how this works. So we're grabbing everything. So this is in vanilla JS and vanilla CSS. So it didn't use any TypeScript or React or anything like that. Um, set up camera. Enumerate devices. Try get user media. So the one thing about I'll start camera. The one thing about getting access to the user's camera. There it is. It did work. You have to access one camera first before you can get a list of the user's cameras. So you have to. Can I have one? And they say yes. And then the browser will give you a list of all their cameras. So can I switch it now? Um, FaceTime camera. Holy crap! It works. That's impressive. This is probably trained on my own code. Um, and it's using, look at that. You get the media recorder, the blobbing. Like I've spent hours writing this code with the custom media recorder. And like even as like a starting point, that's very good. Um, Bolt.new, allow. Um, okay, so we got a bit of a horizontal scroll. That's fine. I'm not, not worried about that. Take a photo. Uh, record a video. Uh, looks like the recording of the video worked. The images are not working. Let's do just do a quick inspect element, see what it was is trying to do. Oh, it's the um, it looks like the whatever code for the data wasn't working. Honestly, I don't I don't care about that. I, I like obviously it should work, but that's pretty impressive. Uh, we'll take a look at the actual code that it built here. We got our index HTML, our canvases, record button. We got get devices. It did get a list of all of the cameras. Pretty impressive. It does error handling. It's using a sync await. Takes a photo. Excellent job. V0. Uh, allow. There we go. Uh, take a photo. 
Good. Record a video. Oh, this one has a nice little countdown working for me. Well, let's just stop it early. Man. That's good. That's good. Um, it doesn't do the camera switcher. That's the only one that didn't do it. Let's take a look at the... <laughs> it stuck it in one file. Give me a style tag. Selecting it all. Video. Get camera devices. This code is very similar. Again, they're running on the same models. So it makes sense that the code is... It's very similar. It's using media recorder has the blob pretty, pretty good. Let's do one more with um, an interest calculator. I think this one's going to show the kind of the neat thing about um, GitHub spark that I haven't seen before, which is um, use AI in the app. So I am telling you to make an app that the app itself uses AI. Oh, one other thing I, I saw is you can also upload quite a bit. 10 files at 3.75 megs each. So you can upload almost 40 megs to V0. So if you do need to give it some context for stuff you're working on, um, I think with GitHub Spark, you probably are, are doing that in your editor if you have existing stuff, but maybe not. You could upload some icons, maybe a bunch of images that you want to be used in your project. So here we go. GitHub Spark compound interest calculator. So if I want to save $1,000, there's no labels here. Savings goal. I want to save ten dollars. So calculate. Congratulations on reading your savings goal and surpassing it. Watch this. If I click it again, you can tell it's AI because of the rainbow border. It's different every single time because it's using AI itself. You could also get some suggestions. Well, like that's a that's an app. You could deploy this thing to a website and people would find this helpful. Let's take a look at Bolt. Oh no! Duplicate declaration calculator. Okay, well we hit an issue. Um, can can AI fix it? Yeah, we'll just do this. Let's just say fix this error. I hit the rate limit. Oh, you gotta upgrade. Oh yeah, that's okay. That Vercel used to have rate limits. It looks like theirs is now now totally free as well. Um, let's look at the Vercel one. Initial amount, investment, suggest a new goal. What happens when I change it? There we go. It's it's reactive. And I click it. It's not suggesting a new goal. Let's take a look at the code real quick. Again, I'm sure the code is going to be good, um, at least passable. React. Makes a bunch of components. Oh, I think I think that these are using Shad CN components. Yeah, because like it doesn't tell us what that actually is, but you can. What happens if we download it? Oh, yeah, it doesn't doesn't actually give us the components themselves. You probably have to Shad CN install it yourself. But again, the the whole idea with this V zero is it's it's version zero. So, are we screwed as as web developers with this type of thing? Um, I think that the baseline is, is really, really going to be changing, you know, like if we can build something and get up and running so quickly to sort of start from there, that's huge. And if people who don't know how to code can also build things that are, are at least functional for them, I think that's pretty exciting as well. I don't know that this is this is going to be the future of programming or what it looks like. A chat window is simply just one UI. Um, I would just say that don't write it off because you think it's dumb because I think this stuff is is not going anywhere.